Welcome back to Chris and Retro. Uh, today's video, I'm going to talk about uh, purpose and priorities. Um, we have plans. So when we're moving forward in a recovery journey or in our life in general, when we're trying to strive to do more, we often have plans to get there. Those that are successful uh, in fitness agendas have a strong training plan, accountability coaches and such. Those that are in recovery have recovery treatment plans. Um, They've got 12 step programs, other options that, that are basically a prescription for us to know where we're headed. I was reading a book this morning, actually, and there's a chapter there on priorities, which really inspired a lot of this based on some other things I've been running into recently and some of the information I've shared with you. This is a very practical portion of how we move forward in our lives and how we deal with things. If it's not only addiction, but just generally speaking, either professionally, personally, no matter where you are, I find this to be practical. Um, but in this book, it, it had the quote, it says, planning is bringing the future into the present so that you can do something about it now. And that quote was by Alan Lakeen. I'm not familiar with who he is, but I found that to be interesting. You know, it's our planning is to we, is to bring some action about what we project in the future to to do something today with it. And um, I really love that concept, honestly, as we start looking at um, our plans and what we want to do with our lives or what, whatever else we're trying to accomplish, <clears throat> we have to make sure that we have certain things in place. You know, alongside of this, um, you could say that that's your purpose. And, and so I think a lot of times when we talk about purpose, we think of some other noble reason. And I think that's probably where in, in the end it does lead to anyway, like what is your calling? Why are you here? We have always have those questions, you know, why are we here? You know, what is it? What is this whole reason for me specifically based on my skill set and who I am? Why am I here? I've had that question as well. I know my purpose and I'll explain to you how I got to that point. But your purpose could simply be just this plan that you have and what you're trying to execute on. Now, one of the things that this book talked about, but also I've seen true to, in my life as well, plans, purpose, all of it ha is really of no value if you're not prioritizing correctly. So if you think of it like this, you know, your purpose is um, where you're headed and your priorities tell you how to get there. Another analogy would be if your purpose is the, is the uh, journey, the road that you're traveling on or, or the vehicle that's taking you down that traveling uh, down that road, your priorities are going to be the one driving it, steering that car. Those are helpful thoughts for me as I, th I thought about the two and how they marry each other. But I think that what we do oftentimes is we take purpose and make it this loftier philosophical discussion and don't necessarily recognize that purpose actually has practical elements to it and they have to be together to make it work. Just likewise, how are you going to know to prioritize if you don't know what you're, what you're all about, what you're trying to accomplish? So that brings the big question. And this is the question you hear all the time from people because we, I think we don't know what our purpose is. Why are we here? I think that's because we, we define for ourselves as purpose as some grand, grand stage element of somebody's life that has to be poured out as the one thing that they are. And it may not be the case. It may be just your servant, your, your servant to others, or maybe you are a great public speaker, or maybe you're just, you know, who knows? Any number of things could be your purpose and why you're here. If we look at what purposes actually do, is it's their value to those around us and their benefit to our own lives. They're, 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 they are the greater good that we produce out of ourselves. Now with that, you know, the question is, again, how do I find my purpose? How do I know? I'm not sure there's an exact answer how to do it. I can tell you how I found mine. It was really basic math. You know, I had a serious struggle. And I found activity that was my greatest benefit that ultimately turned into the best offering I have for other people. So out of that became a purpose that I'm pretty clear on. You know, I know what it is when I hit the ground in the morning and I know what it is when I go to sleep at night. Now, it doesn't mean I'm confident that I'm executing on being effective in my purpose, but I certainly know what it is. And so what is my purpose? Well, my purpose is here having this conversation with you. Um, it's to have the conversations with every one person that I meet. My purpose is not to share my war story. Why do I make that distinction? <clears throat> well, I'll give you an example. Um, Sam and I were uh, watching somebody speak over recently, and this person went to exhaustive detail. It was in a recovery setting. And this person went into just extraordinary detail about their, their past. And I'm talking the gory, nitty-gritty, 35-minute presentation about 
their past. And now every time we see that person, we don't, I, I still don't recall what it is that she feels that she's called to do out of that very in-depth war story. I do recall all the egregious things she accomplished and they've, every time I see her now that's grain in my head. Now I, I shouldn't be judging, but I'm human just like everybody else. I don't hear her hope and I don't hear what she's offering others. I heard her hor war story, her horrors. And that's all I think of now. So what does it have to do with anything we're talking about now? Well, because I think that's where we get wrapped around the axle. We think that we go through bad times and then that's all we've got to talk about. I personally don't believe that's really how it works out. If I sat here and gave you every single detail, ugly, gross, nasty detail of my history, um, I don't think that you would ever hear my hope. You'd never hear the product and the purpose that I actually have to offer. And so what I'm trying to offer is um, an avenue and a seed of change or even just red flags, warnings. You know, I've been through enough. I've done enough to myself. I've caused enough calamity for other people that I feel like my purpose and calling is to be here for you and to present for you an available option. My war story lands in this place where I basically can make eye contact with you. If you come to me with some kind of craziness, I'm like, you know what? I get it. I've either been a roommate with somebody like that or I've been that person. I kind of see where you are. Let's, uh, let's figure this thing out. Cause I did. So that's, that's what my war story does. So what it is not, my war story is not my purpose. My purpose is the outcome of that based on the struggle that was there in my life and how that best benefits me. So the benefit for me was a good life where I'm actually being productive and growing and finding new opportunities and new ways to, to fulfill my purpose. And then as I'm seeing other people benefit from it and having that come back to me as fulfilling and rejuvenating, um, <clears throat> I know what my purpose is. So knowing all that stuff, what do I do? Well, I just sit here and grab a mic and get on this channel and then occasionally do that like I am right now. Um, but is that the soul of it? No, it's not. So my priority is to make sure that I'm, for me and my purpose to prioritize it and mobilize it as I make myself readily available to be authentic all the time. I'll say I'm Chris, every, the same Chris everywhere. And I try to be that. That authenticity is how I can execute on my purpose because really what am I doing? My job is to plant seeds of hope to people in any situation. And sometimes that means tough love. And sometimes it doesn't mean, I tell you what, I'm not walking around handing out flowers. And I'm not all Pollyanna about things. I'm not. But if we're in a, I see somebody that's struggling and they want help and they would go to any length to get it. I can share with them a path, a couple paths maybe. So hopefully you understand where I'm going with this is that um, if you are struggling to find what your purpose is, sometimes our purpose isn't looking forward. Sometimes our purpose is looking back and see the path that brought us here. I think a lot of times we we are so um, desiring something positive to come out of our lives and we're trying to find the way and the direction and where we're supposed to go and what we're supposed to do next. And sometimes it just means looking back at the pathway that brought you there. There may be some very clear indicators that show you what road you're supposed to be on and what you have to prioritize next. Sometimes looking back, you find out weaknesses. You, know, you find out some um, <clears throat> you know, holes in your game. You know, I look at business planning. When you're managing a business, you think you, a lot of times your plan includes a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I think it's a healthy exercise to go through as you look back at recovering your own life. You know, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What opportunities are available for you today? And what are the threats? Out of that, that really the def definition of understanding that about yourself oftentimes will reveal a purpose. If nothing else, it'll at least put that plan in place. And to my point, you can actually be effective with your purpose by making sure you prioritize appropriately. I found this discussion in, the, in my own head and reading this book and, and talking to others around me that um, this is a missing piece. You know, we, we go through our recovery journey and we know that our story is about recovery, but our purpose was never just to live as addicts and it was never just to live as former addicts. Our purpose was to get our feet back underneath us, be productive citizens and start contributing to those around us. The nuances of that and the other elements of that and angles of that are really down to who you are as a person and what you bring to the game. You know, I'm not going to be the person that you're going to want to do finish work on your house. That would never be my purpose. I could tell you your house would look like trash. I'd have one wall half painted and probably a bunch of coffee cups thrown out through the other parts of the drywall because I just lost patience. But I could be the person that would come alongside some your, your loved one 
and try to help them in a time when they're really foggy, antagonistic, angry, whatever else. And I can sit with them face to face and say, what are we doing here? What's the plan? And, and help them beyond that. We all have our lane, you know, um, in my history, you know, it's pretty important that you stayed in your lane. <laughs> you know, uh, some places find that offensive because they want us to, you know, cross over and be with other people. I find that really not effective. And what I mean by that is in the treatment community, if you say stay in your lane to the treatment community, a lot of times people that are certified or whatever in those those communities will get frustrated with you because they want you to be all things to all people. And I personally find that to be uh, burnout laden. So I feel like if you stay in your lane and what you do well, also stay in your lane in terms of minding your business where it doesn't belong, you know, you shouldn't be sticking your nose in. Those are good ways to for you to stay on course as well. Hope this video is helpful to you guys. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Please like and subscribe, comment, share it with friends and family. Um, you know, I got a friend of mine, Jesse, who's going to be on the show here. Uh, I'm actually recording with him in a couple of weeks. He'll be, I, I think we're going to drop it in January. Um, he's one that says, hey, you know, this show doesn't cost a thing for you. Just click like, cl click subscribe if you watch more than two. And I think that's a good math. If you watched one, you thought it was trash. You don't need to subscribe. But if you watch two and you like the content, subscribe. You watch three, talk to a friend. Say, hey, check this guy out. He's a little lunatic, but he's got some stuff that he's heard from other people that might be useful. Thanks again, guys. I hope you have a great day and um, I'll talk to you soon.